Welcome back. I'm Dees. This is my workshop. Today I'm going to record a little, a few clips for another Messing in the Shop episode. It's been a while since I put one out and I'm starting to get a few different clips from different little projects that don't really have a video of their own and I just wanted to share with you. This is just kind of an introduction to that video plus I'm going to show you something I'm going to upgrade on these mats. I like these mats. They're working out really nicely. If you recall from a video in the past, if you if you caught it, I bought these neoprene rubber, this roll of this neoprene rubber in order to protect my table. And it just I just cut them to fit on the table. Well, the originally I had my vise offset and I had different lengths cut for this neoprene rubber. And when I decided to center my vise, which made more sense due to the travel and some of the projects I was working on, I wouldn't have quite the travel on the x-axis that I wanted. I went ahead and centered my mill vise, and I, the part that I cut off, because you remember this was longer, the part that I cut off, I just put on the other end of this one. I'll bring you in why I'm going to revisit this. I'm going to cut another piece that's that's long enough to actually fit my table on this side. I'm going to bring you down here closer and I'll show you why. This is how I solved. I just cut the piece off of the other side and just butted it up against this piece because this there used to be no more than I had over here on the end. But if we take these off, you can see what's Maybe you can see, you can see what's forming here. It's a slight rust line. Now, I'm not getting, I don't keep this wet or anything, but I think what's happening is on, the, on the, like a really humid day, you know, these are the, the metal, the table is cold. And its condensation is getting just down through that little crack, this little separation here. But if you look at the rest of the table, having these, um, and I pay attention to this. I don't, I don't just leave these indefinitely. I'm, I'm, I am worried about getting rust on this whole thing, which is why I was checking this. But this faint line here, I'm gonna probably use a little Scotch Brite get that off of there, and. What I want to do is cut a full piece of this neoprene rubber to actually fit all the way across to the end. That way it keeps that moisture away from it. I can, you know, oil it, keep it oiled, but that's what I want to do is cut a new piece of neoprene rubber in order to fully, you know, eliminate this gap and then fully cover this side of my, my mill table. Well, so let's get out the the roll of neoprene that I have, and I'll bring you over to the cutting bench, or the cutting board that I have, and we'll get it measured out, and we'll cut a new piece. I think we're just going to cut this off. We need 11 and 1 8 inch across, so I'm going to go a little stronger. I can always cut some off, but I want to make sure that I get enough material to where I can make sure that we're we got it all got everything we need now I do have inches and stuff here on the cutting board cutting mat but I think I'll just measure it to be sure again 11 and 1 8th I might go a little stronger measure this side 11 and 1 8th I'll go a little stronger I'm going to cut that off right there. I got plenty of material on both sides. This factory edge is going to be more square. Let's get that cut and then we'll tweak our, our piece because we'll have to cut it width, but I want to get this cut right now. here I can back and make that last cut okay let's go there. 
done with this bigger roll. Let's roll that back up. I'm gonna roll this piece back up and then we'll, we'll get it put away. Now we're ready to cut this eight and a half wide. It needs to be eight and a half wide to cover all of the table, including the DRO scale that I have. And I might as well protect that while I'm at it. So we'll use this straight edge up here. We'll come down eight and a half inches and then we'll cut it along this plane. And I think I might try to use I'll use the board this time. I actually won't need to measure it. I can use the board and just line up my my straight edge. Line up this straight edge. to be eight and a half. Eight and a half. There, that's better. That's where I want to cut it. Eight and a half. Take it slow. I don't want to be rough. Don't want to get out of that groove. That's better. A little stubborn spot there. There we go. Here's our piece I'll probably put in a toolbox to soften, cushion some of the heavier attachments that I have. And finally, there is our our piece of neoprene rubber. Let's see which side is square. It's going to be this side. Because I used all the right tools. And then finally we need to, I'll just use my existing rubber mat as a template. We need to cut this piece of rubber, this little relief out for my for my vise. See if we can draw it for reference. I'm also going to double check and make sure this is the right orientation. Yeah, that's good. So we want to cut that out. I'm just going to freehand it lightly. Hopefully you can see it. We'll do that a few times. I don't know if scissors would be better. It seems like scissors would probably make make it worse. It's working. Getting there. take it over there let's do a test fit see how we did here's our new rubber mat hopefully we did this correctly it fits in here that'll lay down there we go and it just overhangs just enough now we shouldn't have that same problem with moisture getting through a little crack here I like it now both sides are protected much better that's a lot that's a big improvement I had the material might as well take care of that problem 
Hope you enjoyed. Now we've got, let me bring you back here. Now we have a mat for both sides. Thanks for watching. I just thought I would share share this with you. I really like this parting tool that takes these carbide inserts. You can see pretty slick little system. However, I screwed up using this on one of the projects. I ended up catching it or being too aggressive with my feed. It caught bound up and bent this bottom portion. Not only that, it boogered up the the end where the carbide tip mounts. So basically I scrapped this part, this holder. Um, I do have some more of these inserts, about five of them left. I really, this thing, when it's, when you put a new insert in here, this thing really works well. I was just, I either didn't have my my machine centered, you know, completely parallel to what I was trying to part off. And I think I was also being too aggressive. I didn't capture that on video, but it, trust me, it was pretty alarming when that happened. I need to scrap the end of this. It's, let's get it out of the tool holder. I'll show you a little bit closer. Let's get this out of there. There's the part, QA06R20J, 3 eighths by half. Then there's another number, 22A0272. I like this thing. I'm gonna buy another one to replace it. I, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna scrap this. This, is, this could be a good future project for, you know, all of this is already still good. If I was to cut this off, I could maybe adapt this for some other tool holding, make a, a different type of tool. I've seen a video out there. Uh, I forget who it was. It was one of the small machine shop channels. Made a really slick tool that actually had two ball bearings on it. And you can put this in your tool holder, your tool post, and you line up your materials and you push this on the far end, so you got your chuck down here, your material here, and then you can push this in until everything's centered between, so you know, you got your your tailstock live center over here as well. And what you're doing is trying to center up your material. It's kind of a slick way to, to get your material running true to the tool post anyway. I thought I'd like to tackle that someday, but I, I could adapt this perhaps I'd have to figure out a way to fasten it, but this, even if I cut this off, this has already a, got a clamping mechanism for some future work holding, tool holding. You just loosen this thing up. If I was to cut these flanges off, you could slip something in here, tighten it down. You know, it's already ready to go. But normally, if it wasn't broke, you would take an insert like this, you set it in here, tighten it down. And if it was, wasn't was off center, this would be straight, it'd be in there nice and tight. And this thing is sharp and it worked great. It's just, I was so frustrated when I hit that, but I'm gonna buy another one just cause I like this. This was a really nice parting tool and I messed it up. Anyway, I thought I would share and, you know, sometimes we make mistakes and got to replace our tooling. But if you're interested in anything like that, just search for this stuff on Amazon. That's where I got it. Welcome back, guys. Let me get this thing out of the way. I wanted to share a couple purchases that I made. During one of the past videos that I made, I, I broke another tap. So I decided I, I need to be, partially it's my fault, but partially it's the taps I was using. I don't recommend those taps. 
So, but I did decide as I need new taps, I'm just going to start buying good quality ones. And I wanted to try a brand YG1, and I ended up purchasing two taps that are broken um, that I needed to replace. Let's check these out. I haven't opened this yet. Let's check them out together. There's one. I've never used these, but uh, a friend of mine swears by them, and I thought, can't be any worse than what I've been using, so let's grab a couple. Now, two of the taps were... Uh, the, the original taps were, were Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh brand, and I broke them, but the two that I needed were a 1032 and a quarter 20. So this is how they come. These are YG1, YG taps, and they come in just a little case. I figured I would just use that uh, Pittsburgh case to hold these, but let's see, there we go. So there's the tap. Decent quality. I like the fact that I should be able to get pretty low with this tap, but this is my 1024, not 1032, 1024. And they're different colors. I'll bet they're different uh, grades. This one's a GH3, uh, made in Korea. This is a bottom, SF bottom tap. This is a square end tap. They're very similar. Spiral flute tap. This is an eight high speed steel quarter 20 F8 series. So they make all kinds of grades. I'm still learning. I don't know. I, I just kind of bought the first two that I could find. Um, these are kind of common sizes that I use and I wanted to make sure I had them for that next project. Here is the, the quarter 20. I'm sure that would work a whole lot better than the last one I used. I did end up finishing that project with another quarter 20. I forgot I had a really long quarter 20 tap. Um, and it w allowed me to complete this project. That's this cross member here was what I used. But if we pull that out of there, this is the quarter 20 tapped hole that I made. And this, this should go right in as well. But that's what I used to tap those out was the, the other one. This looks like it would probably shave a little more material off, clean up that hole a little bit. But no need to do that. Anyway, I want to share that with you. I'm going to try these YG taps. Um, I do need to learn what grades to purchase, when to buy different products. But that's what you get when you purchase one of these YG taps. Comes in a little plastic case. And they're, I don't know, roughly eight, ten bucks a piece. But I do look forward to using something that's got some quality behind it. Hey everybody, I'm Dees. Welcome back to my workshop. Today I'm just going to do a quick unboxing of a couple tools and items that I picked up for some of these other accessories. Uh, I already opened this box. I'll show you what this is. As I've mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned this in another video. I think I have. But I want to work on some anodizing, and it's still, it's spring here in the Midwest, but it's still chilly in the workshop, and parts of the process when I'm working on the anodizing aluminum, you need to have warmer water. you got to control the temperatures of that water, about 140 degrees, I think, Fahrenheit. In addition to that, I need to boil water and have to seal the dye into the aluminum once the dyeing process, the anodizing process is complete. So what I did was I picked up this and this is it's it's one of those hot plates, those lab style hot plates. This is just a super generic one. The, these things can be $300. I'm not spending that kind of money for this. It's it's got the heating ability. This particular one will go hot enough to boil water. It'll actually go beyond that. All I needed to do is boil water. And then it has the stirring mechanism with the stir rod. Now, on Amazon, that's where I picked this up. There's two of these 
that are identical looking. One of them says Vivor across the front, and one of them says HYCC. I guarantee you these are the same thing made in the same factory at the same place with a different sticker. I didn't want to buy the Vivor one because I'm not promoting Vivor. I just happen to be a guy that bought a Vivor lathe. It's really not great quality. It's it's doing the job for me and everything, but I don't want to necessarily promote Vivor. Um, you know, I think they could make a little bit better product, but again, without their cheap products, a lot of this stuff, many of us wouldn't even attempt to purchase it or get into the hobbies. So that is what it is, but I went ahead and got HYCC instead of Vivor just because I could. So there's the hot plate in this particular kit. It comes with the, the rod on the back. There is a stir stick, some mounting mechanisms, isn't really a product review it's just what you get in the box it's one of the more affordable ones there on Amazon but the it comes with your some plastic rods in order to be able to hang things off of this it's got this little plastic mechanism here and Essentially, you can mount up whatever you need to do that way. There we go. Pretty basic, but if I need to hang something in there, you know, I could use this or I could make a metal version of that. Comes with an extra fuse, a little, you can buy these with this magnetic Teflon coated stir and a manual. Anyway, there we go. So I got a hot plate so that I can hopefully get into trying some anodizing soon. Set that aside. And then I picked this up. This is an accessory for another project that I want to work on. Let's see what's in here. All right. We got a case. Kind of a big case. There we go. So it comes, it's shards. Uh, again, wasn't terribly expensive, but I wanted to get something that I could use. Let's see what the quality, I haven't opened this yet. We'll see just what this quality looks like. And what is it? It is a 12 inch surface gauge. And I got that because I want to use it with my surface plate, my granite surface plate. The case is nice. I mean, it's packed very well. Can't complain about that. It's got some nice long-term oiled, you know, an oiled base for long-term storage. Oh, so it has another... Chief Inspector Certificate, just like it'll go great with my HHIP certified granite plate. If you're interested. This one, to be honest, has some, it looks like there's some handwritten words on it. Perhaps, perhaps this is more legit. It comes, so you get the case with it. It comes with the dial indicator it comes with the surface scratch or uh, you know the height gauge attachment you can raise and lower this as needed one way or another there we go so this doesn't have a rapid rate and uh, wheel but you know we can get that set up there's a bit of a scratch crack in the the window here. I may contact them just because I can. I don't particularly like that. It's brand new. Um, overall, though, it's got a heavy base. I'm not. I don't want to take all this stuff off quite yet. But as you can see, there's some oil paper here to keep it from rusting. But it's supposed to be ground very well. Come with. It also comes with. I believe. This would be another attachment for attaching different things. There we go. 
and I think my dial indicator will fit into here. Hmm. That won't fit in there. I don't, it may not be made for that, but that's, that's too big. I mean, I could maybe use this one. That's too small, but good opportunity for you to make my own. But the idea would be to mount my surface gauge in here, tighten that down, keep it from moving, and, and see if I can use it that way. So this will be a new, another project that I make. I'll make a, try to make one of these things, a pin with a dovetail on it so that I can mount my surface gauge. There you have it. So I think I will contact them. The, the glass on this is cracked. Um, you buy, you know, you get what you pay for. It's, uh, yeah, it's got the same crappy inspection report. The, you know, don't expect anything legit when you buy this stuff. Yeah, there, there's nothing. There's nothing on here that's that I would call test as legit. It's just some rubber stamps. Anyway, I just want to share that with you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you on the next one. Now you might be asking yourself, what is this? Well, this is my uh, surface plate, surface gauge. It uh, is kind of a health helping hand. It's a cross member. I got a video making this first part, and I got another video making this cross member, uh, this bracket, this clamp that can hold this cross member. I'm just going to continue to expand this project and see what I can add to this thing to make it more and more functional. Uh, my original intentions was to use this thing for a surface gauge and my surface plate, and I still do intend on doing that. Kind of an interesting project if I need to hold something. I also want to get into anodizing aluminum. This would help me hold parts and materials in a solution. It, it's just kind of like a helping hand, helper hand. But it's just kind of sitting here. I'm still working on it right now. We'll put that aside. But what's related to that is I decided to actually get a surface gauge. It's actually a height gauge. This is a Shars. It's 12 inch. I haven't opened it yet. This It came in a box from Amazon, but for the price, it seemed fairly affordable, and I thought I would give it a try. I purchased a 6 inch. I wanted the 12, and I, had, I think I accidentally purchased a 6 inch. It doesn't matter. It actually had a cracked lens for the, 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 dial, the indicator, and I thought, it's brand new. I'm going to go ahead and send it back. It's Amazon, free shipping. So that thing's going back, and I went ahead and repurchased a new one, but I went with the 12 inch. It was a dollar and a half, two dollars more for this one. First impressions, this is a Shars. It's It comes with a pretty beefy case to protect this thing. It's kind of big, but it's also, it, you know, this is supposed to be a precise instrument. It's going to protect it as long as you keep it in here and not out in the elements. It comes with minimal documentation. Of course, we got the standard, just like the surface plate from HHIP. It's it's one of these sketchy little cert certifications. Somebody said they do them in batch certification, so it's kind of just a rubber stamp. Everything's fine. I don't know how much this was inspected, but the, it was inspected and it's got some rubber stamps on it. That could be just printed that way. I, I don't know how legit this is. However, it does come with some sort of inspection and certificate. <laughs> anyway. For what it is, for what it take it for what it's worth. That's what you get. Instruction manual, if you need that sort of thing. And here is the surface, the height gauge. Let's get this out here. It also comes with an accessory. So this is it. It it comes packaged in a plastic bag. We can pull that off. Here's, here's the height gauge. It seems to be, it's pretty hefty. It's pretty substantial. It's not loose. There's no loose parts. This seems to be very well, you know, it's got a, a textured paint on it. It's kind of nice. There is a waxy coating on it to prevent rusting, but I don't, there isn't any. Let's see. Okay, so 
Yeah, that's got grease on it. There's some grease on it. But this is your scribe or height measurement, height indicating gauge. This piece will remove from here, and you can swap in different, different uh, accessories. The height gauge is, it is in inches. Uh, there is no rapid handle. I believe you need to just move it up and down manually. And then I think you can lock it in place. Yeah. This, one of these should be a fine adjustment, I would think. Let's see. Yeah, so here's your fine adjustment. Yeah, so there is a fine adjustment. Hopefully you can see that. That's this over here if I needed to, to do that. If you unlock this, you can rapidly move it down until you get where you need to be. Again, you have your inch readings go all the way down to, I suppose to test it out, you can bring it all the way down and check your surface plate. I'll, I'll get into the surface plate later with this. I just wanted to share what you get out of the box with this particular product. Like I said, I went with the 12 inch. Six inch is kind of a nicer height, but I thought for the price, I might as well go ahead and get the taller one. It's a pretty nice, pretty hefty base. I look forward to using this. It has grease and grease paper on the bottom for the ground surface, the ground surface. I need to clean all that up, but I'm gonna leave it on there for the moment. The, in addition, it comes with one more accessory. I think you can buy multiple different types of mounting, clamping type mechanisms here. I can put this in here and this is, I don't think it's 3 8 It's probably in metric. Yeah. It's eight millimeter. So this is eight millimeter for uh, different accessories. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This, I believe is 3 8 not eight millimeter. Yeah, it's nine and a half millimeters, so it wouldn't fit in here. But if it if it did, you could actually put this in here, and actually use this as, and then lock it in place with your test indicator. The way that I made my homemade one, I can actually use this because this is three eighths and it fits into my clamping mechanism. Regardless, I'm gonna say initial impressions with this Shars height surface height gauge. It's very well made. I'm not going to complain about this one. The price was right and I look forward to using this, but this this does seem to be a nice quality made part. I got no complaints with this one. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanted to share this with you. Um, if you watched one of, if you followed the mini machine shop on YouTube, Dave M. He's really super, he's been super helpful. Become a good friend of mine through the YouTube um, system. Just just offered lots of help throughout the last couple of years, and gives me a lot of advice. And when he comes across something on eBay or maybe a, a suggestion for some tooling or reference material that I that I could use, he'll throw it my way and suggest uh, that I look into something or maybe make a purchase. Um, and in this case, this, he recommended this machining volume number three, it's a metals handbook, volume three machining. This is eighth edition. He recently started doing anodizing and some welding and other things. And he has a lot of the series of, of this metals handbook. Each edition, each volume covers comprehensively a different topic or aspect of machining metalworking and all of that. In this case, I'm not into welding yet. Someday I want to. I'm I'm sure I mean there's some more volumes that would help me with some reference. I don't have a machinery's handbook yet. I do have a digital edition, but I'd like to get the actual book someday. But in this case, I thought I'm going to pick this book up. It looks very comprehensive. He recommended it. It was pretty affordable off of eBay, and in this case, this this is in pristine condition this book doubt it was ever even taken off the shelf. So if I back up a little bit, if you watch 
his channel, if you follow along, he did a video not too long ago about his, uh, I believe it's volume seven or eight, six or seven. Well, I think there's a chart in here. It's about uh, welding, volume six, welding and brazing. So inside the cover of this book is a listing of all of the, and he, he shared this stuff too. I'm not trying to steal his thunder. I just thought I would share this particular book that I, I picked up off of eBay. But here's all of the, there's 11 volumes in this eighth edition. He was talking specifically about the welding and brazing. I picked up the machining. He also, let's see, when he was doing um, like chemical stuff for, for anodizing, I forget which book he was using. Maybe it was Heat Treating, Cleaning, and Finishing, Volume 2. There's a lot of really, I mean, you can imagine how how thick and how how large each of these books are covering one of these topics. There's a lot of information out there about this. And as he said in his video, these are not to be read cover to cover. Maybe some of you do that. It's a reference book. If you're working on something and you have a topic of interest and you're looking for some reference material, use this, use the indexes, and find the topic that you're looking for. In this case, it's all about machining. So this would have your speeds and feeds, cutting tool materials, machining, cast iron, different materials, what what uh, tooling and things you should be using, grinding. If you're doing any high-speed steel, you can do some grinding. Um, let's see, honing, lapping. If you want to do some finishes, I think, with lapping to make things super precise. Um, machining processes. There's really a lot of information here. This is a very well put together book. And there's the contents, turning, trepanning. That's pretty interesting. The trepanning, planing, boring, shaping, broaching, tapping, drilling, milling, machine, machining gears. If you wanted to get into gears, there is a lot of information here. Chemical machining, I don't know what that's. Ultrasonic machining, abrasive jet machining, electron beam machining. A lot of interesting off the wall topics that heck, maybe I'd even never heard of. Here's turning. This is interesting. This is, I believe, the angles that you're looking for if you're doing some high speed steel um, grinding. This will give you some degrees, angles that you should be looking for. Pretty interesting. Yeah. So let's say I wanted to know about um, Morse tapers. Oh, here's speed conversion charts. You know, surface feet per minute, your SFMs, and then just all kinds of information. There's a, These blue sheets are, there's some more symbols, you know, it's a, it's a normal reference book, but let's say Morse taper. Let's see if we can go to the M's, the tapered hole. That's uh, up in page 20, around page 30. Let's go take, let's go back and look. Broaching. Page 30, just a wealth of knowledge with a lot of charts, a lot of information. Here's your boring. Scroll through here, reaming, thread rolling. Thread rolling's pretty interesting. That's how, you know, you buy these kits. See those threads there? These are rolled threads. And they don't, they don't use a die to make these. They roll them in a machine to make these mass-produced types of threaded rod. And that's something I learned because I got one of these that wasn't actually rolled properly in this little kit I bought. But yeah, worm rolling, really interesting. Good information. So if you're working on a project and you're... 
you're needing to know something about machining in this specific cutting fluids. If you need to know, you know, speed and feed. If you're, if you're looking for specific information about a particular topic, it's probably going to be in this book. Again, I just thought I would share really cool book. Check out Dave M's video. I'm going to link to that video as well. I'll tag him in this video for his channel. Uh, go check him out. He shared one of the, a different volume on his channel. I just thought I would share this one as well. Really cool book. Let's make some improvements here to the workshop. We have been, well, I have been cleaning up my workshop, rearranging everything. I'll share with you some of the improvements. I'll do a shop update overview. But before I get to that, Let's take care of something that keeps bugging me. I use this shop vac almost every time I'm out in the shop. Anytime you're working with metal chips and these, it, it just flings everything everywhere. And I use this after every project or every other project. I try to clean up, keep it keeps me from tracking chips around, tracking them into the house, wherever I'm I'm going. But this hose is a, is bigger than the one I had before. It's a little unruly. But I want to be able to leave the shop vac out all the time. Like I said, I use it all the time. So putting it, wrapping it up, getting it under the workbench over here is just kind of a pain. So what I want to do is find, I think I'm going to leave it here. I like where it is, but I do want to move the canister back and forth. But the hose is just big and unruly and it just flops around. Anytime I try to hang it somewhere, you know, it's... It's just kind of in the way, flops around. I think what I want to do, I want to leave this out, and I, I want to make a, a bracket system that will hold the hose here. That way I can slide this as close to the wall as I can. This will loop up nicely, and it'll mount right here. So that's the plan. Let's go ahead and get something fashioned here, and just have a simple solution for something that's just fine. What I decided to use was some strapping that I had. I've got this old strapping. I've used, I've had this for so many years. I thought this is going to work out perfectly. I've got a cutoff of some three inch diameter aluminum and I test kind of, I, I could make a couple of these and go crazy and fancy. Someday I might do that, but this is about the right size for what I'm trying to accomplish, but I need two of them. I only have the one. And I don't want to cut, you know, another one necessarily out of this material that I have. It, I got plenty of it, but, you know, it's a good piece of stock. I do want to make some more no-spill oil containers. I'm going to use this stuff. So it's two, two and a half inch diameter. So what I did was I just used this as a template. And I had this, this was just the last remaining bit of this metal that I had, this strapping. And I just kind of wrapped it around. This is plenty, plenty long but this is the last that I have. So I'm just gonna make a circle here, screw it to the wall, and I just got myself a simple solution to hold that hose. I do wanna straighten out some of these little flat edges here. Doesn't really matter too much. I just don't wanna get cut on them, kinda of show. So there we go. So we have our two straps. We're gonna get these screwed to the wall and secure that hose. I just got a couple screws, nothing too complicated here. Got my drill and like I said, we are going to, we wanna mount this hose. Somewhere about in here and about like that. So I'm going to put that first clamp right about here. And I would say about there is what I was thinking.
Hopefully that holds. And if that's strong enough, again, we're looking to just put this thing somewhere so that it's out of the way. For now, that'll work. I may end up upgrading to, I'll make another one of these and this will be a little more professional for my shop than these straps. But for now, we're going to finish out these straps. I do need a couple more screws. I'll go a little bit smaller for the bottom one. Something like that. Let's get a screw in there. Well, I need to go to that one. Let's see if I got a different screw. That'll work there. I don't like this. I want to fix this. So I figure I'll keep the vacuum out of the way. Keep the cord out of the way. It's kind of tucked up against the wall. I can set this out of the way. This is in here. Out of the way. It's not flopping around and when I need to use it, I gotta do is pull that out of there. I'm ready to go. And then I can just put this back. Something like that. That ain't perfect. Um, I'll probably improve this someday, but for now, I know this strapping will probably chew into this hose. I don't really want that. But for now, I'm going to go with that. I'll improve this someday. Just a little system to help keep this stuff tidy. Tell you, spring's around the corner. It's here. I'll tell you what, this shop is getting packed and packed and packed. I got more and more stuff coming in. However, I've got an idea. I think I have an idea. We, we need a solution for all this. A lot of this stuff just doesn't 
belong in a machine shop, or at least a hobby machine shop. This behemoth, you gotta have one of those in this area of the world. We're gonna put something there to take care of it. Spring's here though, it's beautiful. So we're gonna fix it with something right there. I'm gonna go ahead and conclude my messing in the shop video with a shop update and tour. It's the same shop. I've been working on reorganizing it, trying to make more room out here so I don't have to move mowers around and have the outdoor equipment in here. In my actual machine shop, I've got an exit door over here. I've got my air compressor and this is the shop. It's a narrow space in my garage, but it's attached to the house. It's convenient. I can walk out here, work anytime. It's insulated. I can run a heater and heat it if I need to, which is very handy in the winters. It gets pretty cold. Summers, it gets pretty hot. I do not have air conditioning. I could eventually put a window unit in or figure something out, but for now, I don't need it. Get a pretty good breeze through here. It's quite nice. Excuse the camera mount here. I'm trying to keep things clean for this clip. But as you can see, I've done a lot of improvements. We've got, you know, a lot of things are where they were. But I finally got, I got rid of that computer. It just didn't work. It was too much, too much workspace. This is where I do a lot of recording of some of my close-up shots, some of the work that I work on. And I want to make sure that I have that space available. The bandsaw is still here. Some of you have laughed at it, but that thing is working great for me. It was just used scrap material that I had given to me or when we bought the house, you know, tore some things apart. I was able to make a nice table for that thing and it works great. We've got my workspace where I like to record my planning and eventually I'll be doing some metrality and inspection, things like that. That's where I'll be working with that stuff, which is why I did not like that computer over here. It was just taking way too much space. I need this workspace for different aspects of the projects. Got a few items up here. There's my new Gerstner toolbox. Fits up here. This thing's a little bit narrow, but it's going to be fine. It does still protect my surface plate. There's the mill. If we come on to the left here, got my milling machine set up. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. DRO's up here. It swings in and out nicely. It doesn't hit my toolbox. Got a few tools up here. Some of my uh, work raw materials for work pieces. Got my rubber mats to protect my table. Just upgraded this one so there's no seam in there. There's a clip in this video for that. Shows that process. Getting ready to work on another video. I'll be doing some hot bluing. There's my, and this, this, this kind of ends my milling section and begins my lathe section. I've got some of my Allen wrenches, some hammers, things I've made, raw stock, raw material. Tucked away back here, some lubricants, oils. There's my homemade rack for my lathe tool holders, which I use this a lot. That, that's so handy to have. I ended up not mounting it to the wall. I just kind of set it, it's freestanding, it has some pegs on the back to hold it at an angle. I love it, it works great. I thought about making another one, but I don't really need, I don't really need more than that out. This works great. I did, when I bought those two long round bars, it's A36 steel, I went ahead and picked up, I wanted a piece of steel plate. Here's quarter inch steel plate, it's about two foot by two and a half feet, three foot, something like that, 18 inches. But it's, it's, I wanted it for different projects up here that it's something that I didn't have to worry about the wood getting soaked with oil or whatever. So I picked that up. Then we move over here to the lathe. I just cleaned it all up from my last project. It was quite a big mess. We got it all nice, nice and cleaned up right now, ready for the next project. I do need to tear into that headstock. It's not sounding... It's really not sounding good. 
we'll do that in some other video in the future. I got rid of a lot of stuff from underneath the workbench. I got plenty of storage down here. Added a couple a rod so I could put my paper towels there. And I have some more storage underneath here. If we come through here, I since I got the Gerstner, I didn't need the red toolbox over in that area any longer. So I brought out the red toolbox, the base that was underneath here, and I moved it over, put that on top, and now I have plenty of extra storage. These are, for the most part, empty, which is good. I don't like to just fill everything up with things I don't need. In addition, I moved the shelf that was in here out and a bigger one in. This has all of my materials and things that I need for the workshop. Again, plenty of extra storage. I did take advantage of the height in this room. There's a lot of storage up here, just tucked away. And I got a lot of scrap wood, spare wood for different projects, things I need to fix around the house, a ladder. And would bring you back to this corner. This is kind of unused space if I wanted to hang something up there, but for now I'm gonna leave it the way it is. And there's the big toolbox. I just got finished kind of, I'll have to improve this. I'm not super happy with it, but it's, it, it kind of keeps the hose out of the way. I'm leaving this wall open for the most part. But if you come here, I've got my artwork. I actually use that reference quite a bit for tapping and drilling and just a conversion chart for drill sizes to decimal equivalents. I like that chart, stare at chart. We've got just fasteners, things like that. And if we come, well, I've got my safety, fire extinguisher, that's ready to go. If we come over this way, I've got this shop smith that I've used many times for sanding. I usually use it with the sanding disc over here for hand making handles, things like that. But for the most part, it's just a big chunk of steel in the way. I don't want to get rid of it. It's useful. So what I decided to do was put, I had this scrap piece of plywood from an old shelf. And I ended up, I cut the corner off because I didn't want to catch my arm on it going out this door. But I just mounted a, a one by on the back wall, made it flush. And the, the, the tail stock on this shop smith and the table are about the same height. And so I just uh, decided I would just screw, so the shelf doesn't fall off, I just screwed it to that one by that I mounted, and it just lays on top of that. This gives me a really good spot for charging my phone, charging my camera, putting some of my recording equipment, you know, tripods, things like that, just getting it out of the way. Some of my prep materials, my notes for my, my videos. What I'm trying to do is keep this area free and clear of clutter and focus just on the content of the videos that I'm making. That's the idea of getting this back here out of the way so it's not in, in shot, so to speak. And we come back over here and it's nice, clean, and hopefully focuses on a better video. Where did all the stuff go? Mower, where did all that crap go? Well, let me show you. Let's see what the solution is where all of that stuff went to. See what's in here. We put up a yard shed. This is 10 by 16, and we were able to put all of the gas, all of the mowers, the stuff that stinks after you get done using it, but you need it every week. We've got our fertilizer spreader, weed eaters, chainsaws, you name it, chemicals, yard items, things like that. Things that just belong outside, some oil, rakes, garden utensils, and just general storage out here. We've got some extra plywood for different projects. Carts, just big stuff that takes up a lot of space. Buckets, things like that. I did put this, normally I would keep this in a workshop, but I don't really have space for it and I don't use it that often. So I decided that I'm just gonna put it out here. Plenty of space. But I've got lots more wall space. I can make rack. We got lots of storage. I'm really happy. 
even have more floor space if I need to put something in here temporarily to store it. We have a lot of more storage. This is, isn't part of the workshop, but it's an extension of the workshop because I'm able to remove a lot of this stuff from my actual machine shop area and focus more on those projects. Let's bring you out here and we'll do one final shot. There it is. There's the shed. It's a great addition to the shop. Great way to get all that stuff out of the workshop. Hope you enjoyed.